Learning Adobe Photoshop is exciting because even if you're not skillful in drawing, you can still come up with creative works if you have knowledge on how to manipulate its tools and environment, and if you are patient to make your image artistic. The first thing that you should learn is how to open an image on the working area of Photoshop. Since it is photo editing program, it focuses more on image enhancement and manipulation. Placing an image on its canvas means that you are ready to modify and improve its attributes. Opening photos or images in Photoshop follows the same steps on how you learn open files or documents in other application programs that you have learned in the previous. To begin with, let us know how to create an artwork in Photoshop. First, you have to click or go to the file menu. Second, select New or you can press Ctrl N from your keyboard. The new dialog box appears and you have to indicate some important settings for your artwork, such as the resolution, the name of the page or the file name, and the sizes. And after that, click OK after modifying the resolution, name, preset, and etc. Example, here is your Photoshop. You go to the File menu or click File tab, click New, or you can simply press Ctrl N. Then, the new dialog box will appear on your screen. You have to change the name, the preset, so example, that is sample, preset, let's choose that as clipboard, the size, you also have to indicate the resolution and the color mode, whether that is RGB, CMYK, grayscale, or bitmap. Then you have to change the background. Is it transparent, white background, or the default background color, which we have here, color pink. Then after that, just simply click OK or press the Enter key. So that is how easy on how are you going to create a new artwork in Photoshop. You also have to take considerations of the following whenever you are creating a new file. You have to consider the name so that the, the default name will be depending upon the user on what he or she is going to declare. Then the preset. It is a group of edits, contours, and tools which has its own file extension and default folder. The default present in Photoshop is custom. We also have there the size. What will be the width, the height of the image that depends upon the desired size that you would like to apply. There are seven measurements available when indicating your artwork size, such as pixels, inches, centimeters, millimeters, points, picas, and columns. But the commonly used measurement is inches or pixels. We also have to take considerations of the resolution. It is the fineness of detail of an image which is measured in pixels per inch or PPI. The higher the resolution produces, the higher quality of the image. As you increase the resolution, also, the size of the image increases. We also have what we call the color mode. This is the combined colored component based on color channels in the color model. Examples of color mode are bitmap, grayscale, so meaning to say whether the color of the drawing that you're going to apply is red, it will automatically be a color gray. RGB, or what we call the red, green, and blue, then we have CMYK or the cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. It is recommended that if you're going to print your image, choose CMYK. If your artwork will only be saved in the computer, choose RGB. Also, we have what we call the background contents. The choices for this are white background or the background color and transparent. The default is white that is making your working paper in white color. We also have to consider the color profile. It is a precise and consistent color management which displays the actual color of importing images. The default color profile is set every time you create a new artwork. Then, 
lastly, pixel aspect ratio. It describes the proportion of width to height of a single pixel in a frame. The default ratio is set once you create a new image. So those are the different features that you can see in the new dialog box. After creating an artwork, the next thing that you need to do is how to open an artwork or the image that you have created. So the following are the different steps now. From the first one up to the last one, which is you can now see the image placed in the working area. There are several ways on how you can do that. You can simply double-click the image, select the image and press enter, and select the image and click open. So let us try to watch this video. First, you have to go to the file menu or file tab. Click open. Look for the file or for the artwork or image that you have created, whether that is PSD, PNG, JPEG, or TIFF. Let's say, for example, I would like to open a PSD file. Then, click open. So, that is, or those are the steps on how are you going to open an artwork or an image that you have created in Photoshop. Next, how are we going to view the artwork that we have created in Photoshop? To do that, let us open first a Photoshop. You can use the zoom tool from your toolbar. So this is our zoom tool. Just click that one, then click to zoom in or zoom out. To zoom in, or you can simply right click, then click zoom out. Now, shortcut key for zoom in, you can simply press control plus the symbol plus. See? The artwork will become bigger. If you would like to minimize the size of your artwork, you can simply press Control plus minus. See? If you would like to make your artwork fit on the screen, you can simply press Control zero. See? Control minus, minimize. Control plus, maximize. Control zero, fit on the screen. If you would like to make it 100%, just simply press Control 1. So, those are the different zoom tools or the different shortcut keys on how are you going to view your artwork in Photoshop. Working on editing tools in Photoshop enhances the features of the image. These tools do the corrections of some of the imperfections. You can as well copy or remove a part of the image without affecting its quality. Editing tools perform a simple magic to improve your image or photo. It would be exciting to explore these tools as you go along with the discussion. Editing tools are stacked together as one group based on their function. Spot Healing Brush, Healing Brush Tool, and Patch Tool. You can use letter J from your keyboard as the shortcut key. If you would like to use the Clone Stomp tool, Pattern Stomp tool, the Eraser tool, the Background Eraser tool, and the Magic Eraser tool, or the Clone Stomp tool and Pattern Stomp tool, you can simply use or press letter S. For the Eraser tool, Background Eraser tool, and Magic Eraser tool, as well as the Blur tool, Smudge tool and sharpen tool, you can press letter E from the keyboard. And letter O for dodge tool, burn tool, and the sponge tool. So we have here the first tool, the spot healing brush tool. It will quickly remove blemishes of an image. It paints with sample pixels from the image. Just put over your mouse on the blemishes and click on them. Instantly, they are removed or they will be removed. We also have the healing brush tool or you can simply press Ctrl J or letter J. 
It paints with sample pixels from an image or pattern. Press Alt key on the keyboard and the mouse pointer changes to target like circles. Click the surface that you want to be as the sample pattern and click the area where you want to apply it. So example, this one. So what if you would like to remove this one? Simply click this one, the spot healing brush tool. Then brush over that certain part. Then it will be removed. Now, if you would like to use the spot healing brush, right click or the healing brush tool. This time you have to press the Alt key from the keyboard then choose the area where you would like to copy that and put that over to that particular area. So example, this one. Brush. And I would like to remove this one. See? See? It has been removed already. So that is now what we call the spot healing brush tool and the healing brush tool. Next, we also have the patch tool and the clone stamp tool. Wherein, when we talk about patch tool, this tool covers the image part that you don't want to be seen. When we talk about clone stamp tool, use this tool if you need to copy exact detail and color from one part of an image to another area of that particular image. But you have to press the Alt key. Example. So when we talk about patch tool, right click the spot healing brush, then click patch tool. Select the area that you would like to copy, then drag it. See? See? This area has been copied to this one. That is why the pimples has been removed already. Next, when we talk about clone stamp tool, so this is the clone stamp tool. Click that one. This time you have to press the Alt key from the keyboard. So you have to select the area that you would like to copy and move that on top of that certain area. Example, I would like to remove this pimple. So press Alt, then choose this area. Then brush on this area. See, it has been removed already. So that is patch tool and clone stamp tool. Let's now move on with the background eraser tool or the pattern stamp tool rather and the eraser tool. So pattern stamp tool, it points with a pattern defined from the image, another image or a present pattern. So this is the icon for pattern stamp tool. Then we have here the gear icon wherein you can change or modify the settings. Then the eraser tool, it moves a certain part of the image. You can even set the opacity when using this tool, whether that is 100%, 50%, 70%. So let us try the two tool. So let's say, for example, click this one for the pattern or the pattern stamp tool. You can now choose the pattern. So what pattern? would you like to use? So example, I would like to use this one. Then brush that on that particular area. See? So that is pattern. When we talk about eraser, just click the eraser tool. You can even choose the opacity, decrease the opacity, then delete the portion or the area that you would like to delete. So that is Pattern Sum Tool and the Eraser Tool. Let us now see the differences between the Background Eraser Tool and the Magic Eraser Tool. When we talk about Background Eraser Tool, it is better to use this tool if the image has many details along the edges between the subject and its background. You can set the tolerance of Background Eraser Tool. There are three limits to choose from, Contagious, discontagious, and find edges. When we talk about Magic Eraser tool, it deletes surface with similar pixels based on the pixel color value where you click it. 
it is better to click contagious on the options bar so as not to affect the edges of the subject whose color is the same with the background. To do that, let's open again the Photoshop. So right click the eraser tool, then click the background eraser tool. This is the limits. We have discontagious, contagious, and fine edges. But I do suggest just choose contagious. So let's choose now or brush over this area. I would like to remove this background. See? So you're about to or you need to click that one. Then the background will be removed. So that is the background eraser tool. Let us now proceed with the magic eraser tool. Now to do that, simply right-click again the eraser tool, then click the magic eraser tool. Please take note of this one. Check the contiguous so that the other portion which has the same color will not be affected. So in just one click, the background or the white background has been removed. Let's say for example this one. See? So that is now the background eraser tool and the magic eraser tool. We also have here what we call the blur tool and the sharpen tool. This two is contradicting to one another. For blur tool, uses to blur the part or the portion of an image. You can set the strength and mode of a blur tool from 10 to 100%. From normal mode, so we have there the layer modes, then we have the sharpen tool. Applying this tool means that the definition of edges of the image is being enhanced. It increases image contrast, so be careful in using it. Set the strength. The higher the value, the more enhanced the edges becomes. So let's try this artwork. So right-click the blur tool. Then brush on the area that you would like to blur. You can choose or drag or increase the strength of the blur tool and Photoshop. So let's try this one. See? So this portion has been blurred already. So it has been or it lessened a little bit. So that is blur too. See, let's try. There. Some of the blemishes has been removed already. Also, when we talk about sharpen tool, right-click the blur tool, then click the sharpen tool. You can again choose the strength and the mode. Now, once you click that one, choose the area that you would like to sharpen. See what is happening? So that is sharpen and the blur tool. We also have what we call the smudge tool and the dodge tool. For a smudge tool, it stimulates the effect when it is dragged through wet paint. This tool picks up color where the stroke begins and pushes it in the direction being dragged. While dodge tool, it lightens the area of the image. The more that you apply in this tool, the brighter it becomes. Select any from the given ranges. We have shadows, midtones, and highlights. You can also increase and decrease the exposure. The higher the value, the lighter the surface becomes. So let's try this artwork again. Right-click the blur tool, then click smudge tool. Let's say, for example, I would like to drag this color to the right panel of the screen. So see. So that is the smudge tool. Next, we have the dodge tool. Right-click the dodge tool. You can choose the ranges between shadows, midtones, and highlights. So let's choose midtones. See the color and look what will happen. See? It lightens. That is, the exposure is 50%. But what if we're going to make that to 100%? See what happened. So the higher the number of the exposure, the higher or the lighter it will become. Let's try the other ranges. Let's say, for example, shadows. See. 
So as if nothing happens. Let's try now highlights. So that is highlights. But basically, we're only using midtones. Wherein, it lightens the portion or the area that you're going to brush. So that is a smudge tool and the dodge tool. The last two tools that we have in Photoshop is the burn tool or the sponge tool. Burn tool is the opposite of dodge tool. If dodge tool lightens the area of the selected object or artwork that you brushed, the burn tool, it darkens the area of the image. Both tools are based on the traditional darkroom techniques for regulating exposure on the specific areas of a paint. You can adjust the exposure and choose from one or from the range. We have also the sponge tool. This tool subtly changes the color saturation of an area. For example, if an image is in grayscale mode, the tool increases or decreases contrast by moving gray levels away from or towards the middle gray. Saturate and desaturate are the modes that you can choose from. You can also adjust the flow depending on your desired impact of the image. So let's try. Again, let's try this artwork. Right-click the dodge tool, then click the burn tool. Then choose the area that you would like to burn. So I will just be clicking again or pressing the bracket from my keyboard. See what happened. See? It darkens the area that you brush. So that is the burn tool. The last one now is what we call the sponge tool. So under the sponge tool, we have here the saturate and saturate. We have the flow from 50% up to 100%. Look what will happen. So that is now the sponge one. You can use saturate. See? You can even increase the flow. So that is Burn Tool. And so those are the different tools that we have in Photoshop. I hope you learned a lot. For you to understand more the different tools that has been discussed, aside from the video that you have seen, you can also visit this YouTube video with regards to the different tools such as Smudge Tool, Burn Tool, Eraser, the Background Eraser, the Magic Eraser, and the other tools that has been discussed. Bye for now.